there's um, little else we can talk about when there is a change of position at the top of the table. And it feels like a significant one, the manner and the timing of Leeds United going top of the table. And the question we're putting out there is, can anybody stop Leeds now? It was a 12th win in 13 games. Absolutely absurd form from Leeds. They beat Millwall 2-0 on Sunday. We did the game as a watch along. If you want my detailed views on that, you can go back and watch that. But in short form, Leeds were just so efficient, so professional in this one. Millwall stood up, as you'd imagine they would, made it physical, made it tricky. And Daniel Farker, I totally agree with afterwards, said, well, you know, blame them, do you? And I've made this point many times when you're going to face the relegated teams from the Premier League and the top teams in the Championship. You just go and make it easy for them and play them at their game. You will lose. Um, so and we saw Huddersfield uh, go pretty physical against Leeds. Millwall did the same. I think Huddersfield maybe crossed the line a little more than Millwall did yesterday, although Leeds, were, Leeds fans were having fun with Jake Cooper in the watch along yesterday. But none of that really matters uh, because Leeds did what they needed to. Took a bit of quality from Nonto to get them into the lead. I really thought they should have gone 2-0 up between 45 and 60. Yeah, they were really, really dominant. It was really good in the second half. Then Millwall just went for it. They threw the grenade in, made four substitutes. And do you know what? That actually made it a little bit more open. And that probably led to Leeds eventually getting the second goal. But as I say, just um, professional, efficient, relentless, use whatever words you like. And this momentum with Leeds is just incredible at the moment. There's eight games remaining on Leeds' calendar. We are dealing now with um, Southampton. We've got two games in hand and Leicester have got one game in hand. So we are dealing with different amounts in the top four. But 12 wins in 13 games is just um, astoundingly good form. Ipswich did this last year in League One. They won 13 in 14. And it's the type of run that very, very rarely doesn't get you promoted. So um, almost more impressively, no, it's not more impressive than 13 wins. Equally impressively, 12 wins and 13, excuse me, before you dive in the comments, 10 clean sheets. No one, not only are Leeds winning every week, nobody is scoring against them. They're just controlling games and they're just absolutely, absolutely dominant, aren't they? And um, 37 points in 2024. And look, we'll, we'll talk about the bigger picture in just a jiffy. And, you know, Leicester are tied on points with a game in hand and a brilliant squad. So, you know, we're not discounting anything. But just looking at the momentum and the trend, nobody can touch Leeds at the moment, can they? You're essentially taking a combination of a brilliant squad. Yes, you can say Leicester and Southampton have also got brilliant squads as well. A manager who is clearly the best qualified of the four teams up there, having won the championship title twice before. And then this is a team that wins every week and never concedes any goals. And also, and we'll talk about Daniel Farker properly um, now. I saw Daniel Farker do this with Norwich in 2018-19, that brilliant team of Buendia and Pukki and Aaron's and Lewis, the um, the brilliant young fullbacks as well. And we got to roughly this point in the season and he'd been flipping and flopping his central midfielders throughout the season and he got on a winning run and he never changed that team again. He said, this is our team. This is how we're doing this. Winning streak, you know, championship title. Okay, it's, it's easier if you've got Buendia and Pukki, but come on, the best teams always have the best players. That's how it works. And the best players go to the best teams, etc. So, you know, we can cry and moan about that if you're a rival team, but that's the way. And um, we want to see the best players at the, at the top teams, whether that's the Championship, the Premier League, the Champions League, um, whatever. We want to see the stars shine when we watch our football, don't we? But yeah, he is now really proving his worth, isn't he, Farker? Just the guy 
who just knows how to do this. And, um, you know, a bit of chat going on in the Benjamin Bloom WhatsApp group today. If he does go up, he really deserves the chance where maybe at Norwich, he was a bit shortchanged in terms of what he could do in the Premier League. It feels like that guy deserves the chance at a bit of budget there. So, look, Leeds, magnificent, brilliant form and everything is really pointing towards them potentially being the favourites now, despite Leicester having a game in hand and arguably a better squad, certainly an amazing squad, certainly, um, you know, those, well, the three relegated teams have all got fantastic squads, but they've got fantastic teams and fantastic managers to match it. Um, let's talk about Ipswich because it really was while the um, cats away, the mice will play this round. Remember Leicester in the FA Cup, and Leicester's game was due to be against Southampton on Friday. So that took both Leicester and Southampton out of this round. And both Leeds and Ipswich have gone and won. And Ipswich really needed a statement victory, didn't they, after that horrible defeat in the, what was it, like the 100th minute, 94th and the 100th minute, they, maybe 95th, conceded the goals against Cardiff. I've tried to erase it from my memory, to be honest. But... What a bounce back, a 6-0 win over Sheffield Wednesday, just completely dominant, blowing all the cobwebs away. And um, look, I'm an Ipswich fan, so believe me, I'm far more um, attuned to Ipswich falling off than anybody else's. It's just been surreal for this League One team to be keeping pace, not, not just with the best teams in this league, but if you look at the points projections, they're going to be some of the best teams in the history of the championship if they do just continue now and go towards 99 100 101 points which is where where we're headed and you know there's been several times this season where I've been like oh, okay is this it now the regression to the mean Ipswich can't keep performing the way they have and here we are um Ipswich are um one point off top with eight games to play which is absolutely absolutely um insane 80 goals now as well. And um, probably more importantly, given the discussions we had last week about do teams get promoted conceding as many goals as Ipswich have conceded? 49, I think. Um, they got themselves a clean sheet as well. So um, really good round for Leeds and for Ipswich. They made the most of Leicester and Southampton um, being away. Leeds really look to me pretty unstoppable at the moment, I have to say. And that is in relation to Leicester and in relation to Ipswich and in relation to Southampton. Look, we could get through Easter. There could be drop points and I'll change my mind. Um, I've got a mind. I'm allowed to change it. I'm giving you my opinion right now. People get really hung up on, oh, but you said that two weeks ago. And I'm like, well, that's what I thought two weeks ago. I feel differently now. I'm not just going to uh, try out the same thing with different information coming in. Um, Leeds have got eight to play. In fact, this may be a good time to bring the league table up on the screen to illustrate what I'm saying a little bit better. So Leeds, eight to play, 82 points. Leicester, nine to play, 82 points. By the way, look at the goal difference as well. Leeds just went one ahead at the weekend, as we knew they would need to in order to go top of the table. Ipswich, eight to play, 81 points. Let's just leave Southampton out of this for a second. What I'll say about Southampton, to pay respect to a brilliant squad and a really good points total, is they're currently eight points off um, Ipswich and nine off the top. We've 10 to play. If Southampton power through and do this, given that they've got a really crowded schedule with the most games to play. They've got to go away to Leeds, Leicester and Ipswich um, in their 10 games. And the ridiculous thing is, we, we always use two points per game as our metric. If Southampton get two points per game from their last 10, which is a hard run anyway, and end on 93, that will be well played. Probably not going to be enough. Is it? It really does look like two teams are going to get more than 93 points. So for Southampton to really be involved in this as we go to that round 46 game against Leeds, which 
may mean nothing, could mean everything, who knows? May mean nothing for Southampton and a lot for Leeds. We'll find out, um, we'll find out, I'd say nearer the time. Probably not gonna know given how tight this is until literally um the game before what it what it does mean. Um I think Southampton need to knock out probably something ridiculous like 25 points in their last um what would that take them to? 98. Um, it's just insane. So we're going to leave Southampton out of the conversation for now on the assumption that are they going to get eight wins, a draw and a loss out of the final 10 games that involves away trips to Leeds, Leicester and Ipswich? I'm not sure they are, but if they do, wow, what a run-in that will be. That will be one of the greatest run-ins to take promotion will have, will have ever seen. So look at the top three now. And um, we talked about Leeds playing all the hard games in the first half of the season, the hard away games. We talked about that at the time, but it is really, really bearing fruit now, especially given Leicester have one more game to play, don't they? And they do um, play Southampton. They play Southampton at home. Let's be honest, everyone have got to play um, Southampton. But given the running and the momentum, it almost looks like Leeds are pretty nailed on to take one of the places as I sit here right now. Again, that could change. And, um, I can't believe I'm saying it because we thought Leicester were just going to coast the promotion. Then which one of Leicester and Ipswich potentially take the other one? Um, what I will say about Ipswich is when we get back from the international break, I mean, wow, Southampton at home. Sorry, they go Blackburn away and then it's back to back. It's Southampton at home and Norwich away. So you feel like can Ipswich get six points from those first three games to stay in there. And then it's really, really on potentially for Ipswich. I know they would still have Coventry and Hull away to play. But, I mean, wow. And looking at the momentum, yes, I, I could see a possibility where Leicester reset, come back for their last nine games and bang out the sort of... Um, so two points per game for Leicester for the rest of the season takes them to 100. And surely no one is finishing outside the top two on 100 points. It would be absolutely ridiculous. But it does feel like it would need, um, potentially between Leicester and Ipswich, it would need some kind of slip here. One of those little periods. I mean, look what Leicester have just done, essentially, where they've got four points across a five-game period. I'm not sure it would be that bad again for Leicester. I don't see that happening, even though it has just happened. But... A little period, even at the moment of just loss or draw, loss, draw, something like that over three games with the margin so fine now and the context so clear could be what it takes. So, look, that is my take on promotion at the moment. Absolutely incredible. Leicester are projecting just shy of 102. Leeds are projecting just over 99. Ipswich just over 98, and Southampton, just over 93. So even if we go with just the projections, this is, by any point scoring metrics, the greatest totals anybody has ever done as a top four or a top three. It'll, it'll probably be the same for a top two. We've just never, ever seen anything like this. And certainly that record of, it was Sunderland, wasn't it? Quinn and Phillips. I'm going to forget the year, 97, 98? 4-4 in the final against Charlton Lewis on playoffs. They scored 90 points and did not get promoted. I think I've got my numbers right. Surely, at least one team is going to score 90 points and not get promoted this season. But let me know your takes in the comments. To summarise, right now, I'm looking at Leeds and I'm looking at one of Leicester and Ipswich. You tell me what you think down there in the comments.